Welcome back to Hot Rod High School. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at machining a disc brake using this Amco disc brake lathe. So get your coveralls on, your safety glasses on. Let's build some horsepower. We're going to start off today by getting familiar with this piece of equipment. Um, so a few things that you should know about this piece of equipment and how it works and how it operates. We'll take a look first at the cutting head. So the cutting head moves inward and outward by turning this handle. And typically we're only gonna be turning the handle or making any adjustments on this piece of equipment when the machine is actually running. So you typically would not be moving any of this in or outward until you have the brake set up, the machine is turned on and it started the cutting process. These two handles right here move our cutting blades in and out. So if I spin that, you can see the cutting blade moving in and outward. Also, this handle right here starts our automatic feed. So once we have the brake installed on here, and we have the cutting heads all set up and everything's ready, we would then take and move that into the on position. And that would begin the process of automatically cutting our brake for us. And last but not least, the on off switch. As its name entitles, it turns the, sh the machine both on and off. Okay, so now that we've had a second to get familiar with the machine, let's take a look at how to go through the process of setting up a disc brake on this piece of equipment. Okay, I have here the two basic types of disc brake that we cut with this machine. We have the integral hub disc brake, this one here that has the bearing race built into it. And then the more common modern type of brake with the non-integral hub assembly on it. So um, we'll show you the, the proper technique to set up both of them. I have all my components that I need to set up the, this one already uh, sitting here. And typically you'd have to spend a little bit of time and find the correct size that fits into your brake. Uh, for instance, if I take and try to install this hub into this assembly here, that doesn't go down in there far enough. That's not gonna help me center up this brake when I put it on the spindle. If I flip it around, that's the correct size going into the, that uh, bearing race. And the same thing I gotta do on the back side is find the correct size that goes into it. That one is too big, that side fits in there just fine. On the other side, you have your non-integral hub, it looks like this. And this one uses a centering cone to be able to uh, center it up on the brake lathe. And we gotta find a centering cone, fits and goes through about halfway and makes good contact with the inside of our brake rotor. So I'm gonna go through now and show you the process of setting up both the integral hub and the non-integral hub brake on our brake lathe. So first, our integral hub brake rotor. So I found those collets that were the right size to center up this rotor on the spindle. So I'll put the first one on and I'll follow that up with my brake assembly. I wanna slide that on there. Don't drop it, don't bang it around or anything. Slide it on there very gently because this is a machined shaft. We don't wanna bang it, um, it which could do uh, damage to the shaft and then we wouldn't be able to machine the brakes correctly anymore. So I'll just set that brake up on that collet. And I'll slide the smaller one on the outside into the outer wheel bearing. I'm gonna hold that on there and make sure it doesn't have the ability to move or fall off while I put the rest of the components on. So now I'm going to put on this weighted spacer. And since I have a bit more room left on the shaft, I'm also going to put on this last um, spacer right here, this vibration 
and dampening spacer. And now I can install the lock, lock, the lock nut on the end of our assembly. And something important to note here, this lock nut is reverse thread. So it's lefty tidy righty loosey. So now that I got all the components on there, I can tighten it down. I'm just gonna put my wrench onto this. I'm just gonna give it a few taps to have it all tightened in place. And the final step, before I'm ready to machine this brake, I need to install this vibration dampening belt around here. We're all about removing vibration from this system because that's gonna give us a nice smooth clean cut on this brake when we go to machine it. So now I'm gonna show you the process of installing that non-integral disc brake. I'm gonna start with this outside or inside I should say locking clamp and slide that onto the machine. I then need to add a spring to that followed by the centering cone. So now that I got my centering cone, spring, and the outside clamp in place, now I can install the brake. Same thing as last time, I'm holding this up. I don't want this to fall down and hit that shaft and do any damage to it. Now that the brake's installed, I can put on the outside clamp. Next, I'm gonna put on that weighted spacer and my vibration dampening spacer as well. And finally, putting on that locking nut, remembering that it's reverse thread, so lefty tidy. And now I can tighten up the uh, lock nut into place. So now I've got everything all installed. I want to turn on the machine and check and make sure that it's not wobbling around or doing anything weird. This one looks good. So we're ready to machine this disc brake. As soon as we install one last piece, we need to put that vibration dampening belt in place so we can get that Nice, smooth, clean finish on this brake. Okay, now that I have my brake assembled and ready to go on the brake lathe, I need to go ahead and get this thing set up and ready to cut. I'm gonna do all my adjustments with the machine running so that I make sure that not to um, have the heads, uh, the uh, cutting head go into any kind of incorrect spot. So I'll turn the machine on. And now I'm going to make sure that my cutting heads are open. They're not gonna come in contact. I'm gonna go ahead and run the cutting heads back to probably about the last inch or so of my brake before I make contact and run it the rest of the way back. Okay. So now that I have it in place there, I can take and turn this knob. And as I turn the knob, the cutting head is gonna come over and make contact with the brake rotor. I'm gonna do this very carefully, very gently I'm gonna listen and feel as well as watch as it comes in contact. So now that it's making contact, it's cutting into the brake and I'm going to take and tighten down the lock nut here to keep my cutting head perfectly in that one spot. I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing 
on the other side now. Bring it in, make that contact. And then tighten down the lock nut. Now that I've made contact on both sides, I can take and move the cutting head all the rest of the way in to the very back of the brake. So now that I have my cutter moved all the way in past the end of the brake there, I need to do one extra little step here. I'm going to take this knob, I'm gonna take and loosen my lock nut. I'm gonna take this knob and I'm gonna turn it one mark further and then tighten down the lock nut so I can take out any of those marks that I made while getting it set up. I'll loosen up the other side, one mark further, tighten it up as well. And now I'm ready to engage the automatic feed. So I'll take and pull up on my automatic feed lever, push forward. And now you can see that the handle is starting to turn by itself and it will begin the process of machining the brake. This part takes a little while. The important thing on this part is to watch the tool, make sure not to leave the tool unattended at any time. It is your responsibility to make sure that nobody comes by and uh, you know, touches the brake or does anything wrong that could result in them getting injured. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording here and we'll check back in periodically to see our progress because this does take a bit. Okay, we're about halfway through the cut and already you're getting a really good idea of just the difference it makes to have a perfectly cut break compared to you know, how it was before we set it up on the machine. So we're getting that nice, perfect, smooth finish. It's gonna be excellent for our new brake pads to be able to wear into. Just wanted to check back in and show another view of our brake as it's being machined. We're getting right down toward the end here. And one step I didn't show you guys is you need to make sure that you have measured the brake before and after you make your cut. Uh, for one thing, your, your uh, brake cannot uh, be too too thin before you start machining it. So you got to find out what the minimum thickness is that your brake can be machined to before you even determine if it's appropriate to put it onto the machine to cut. So I'll make sure to show at the end of this getting our thickness measurement for this brake. Okay, we are just about done with our cut and take a look on the opposite side and see it looks nice and perfect too. So in a moment here, we'll be able to get our thickness measurement and that'll conclude our job. So we're waiting just now until we see that the cutter is no longer touching any part of the brake. And as soon as we see that happen, which looks like it just happened right now. So now I can take and turn off my automatic rotor feed. And I can turn off the lathe. And now I can get that thickness measurement for my brake rotor. Okay, I have my micrometer out. I can now measure the thickness of my rotor and I'm getting a measurement here. Don't know how well you can read that on the screen. That's a measurement of 
824 thousandths. So we had a starting thickness on this break of 836 thousandths. Looks like we took off about 12 thousandths of an inch during our cut. So now that we've gotten our measurement, we're done machining this brake rotor. So this would be the time where you take all of the components back off, hang up all of the collets and the uh, spacers and everything back up on the pegboard here and be ready for the next person to use this piece of equipment.